So, are you recording? Okay, great. So, we're going to do a flower essence consult for Christine. Um, Excited. We were just, I think, did you work with the Mullen already, or you just worked with the Creosote? I just was doing, uh, right now, in the studio, or even in live? Yeah, just today. The Chaparral one. Okay, you didn't try the Mullen. Mm -mm. Okay, but you are working with the Mullen because it's yeah. in a good grief yeah, quality. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're working with good grief, are you taking like a full dropper or are you just doing like a couple drops? I usually do like nine, which maybe is too much. Interesting. <laughs> you know, the thing with nine is that you're sort of like, you take less than like three or less to get the energetic dose. Mm -hmm. And really like one drop is the hardest hitting energetic dose. Oh. But then when you take like 20 or 30 drops, then you're getting the physical dose that's like good for your physical body. So when you do, nine you're sort of like straddling yeah you know a space between those so i would actually probably i mean i think intuitively if you want to take nine drops do yeah. it but i think also um either moving it up to 20 or taking it down to like two yeah because i've realized when you're as you're saying this it's like i most of the time i'm doing it at that dosage when i'm having this kind of like physical or like somatic experience of grief you know what i mean and i'm like yeah do it, it's kind of well the ritual of literally just stopping and like taking the, the cap off and like the dropper and like counting it it's like just that in of itself is this kind of like come back into my body moment yeah um but then yeah that's interesting that to think that i could play around with upping dosage or lowering it because, yeah, I think I'm doing it in, not crisis is a strong word, but, like, a moment of, like, distress. That's a good time to take it, though, you know? Yeah. So what do you want to focus on for this essence? So I think still, obviously, there's, like, waves of grief happening, um, which I don't want to completely be like, I'm done with that. <laughs> like, it's not true. Um, but I was drawn to... Which was, I was looking at Angelica or like the, I think it was Desert Poppy. Um, Desert Marigold? Desert Marigold, yeah. there we go. Um, which now that I'm realizing it's Marigold, I'm like, that feels very like calling out my Mexican <laughs> roots and especially around like um, grief and mm. honoring the dead. Um, I am wanting to. I feel that I'm kind of naturally moving towards this next chapter of grief, and obviously it's not linear, but of where I'm seeing more of these like moments of joy or like positive, like being able to interact with a space or an object that like before was just like devastating, now is like comforting or like, um, okay. what's the word? What is it? Why am I saying reminiscent? That's not right, but uh, resilient. Well, yeah, it's like a source of like nostalgia. There we go. Like something, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like being able to kind of be turning the corner a little bit of like feeling more of the lightness of like I'm able to remember this person through like a joyful like lens. Okay. You know what I mean? Versus it being like it's just debilitating grief, like the end. It's like, uh, there's that, but it's moving more towards like, what are the things or even like, okay, this is a weird example, but I've been noticing it like in my own like mannerisms or like speech or like, just like even like bodily movements, like noticing things in myself that are totally my mom and being mm -hmm. like the celebratory thing of that, you know, instead of wow. like just being like, oh my God, I miss her. She's completely gone. like this is fucked like it's like yeah. I'm seeing more of these kind of sprinklings of like you know I'm wearing all of her jewelry and I can look at it and be like I feel close to her and then like I'll say something and it's like the way that I'm speaking or like a phrase that I say I'm like oh that's by mom like yeah. coming through you know and um it being this like kind of happy like joyful moment in that instead of it being like oh that's my mom coming through oh shit my mom's dead Bleh, like and just being like Definitely. catatonic you know what no, I mean no it's almost like I was looking up um in that book it didn't have anything but about gratitude because yeah. that's I think like one thing I I love talking about grief you know is that like 
there's a book that I recommend, Martin Pretchell, like my friend gave me that, my landmate gave me that book when my best friend died in 2019. Mm -hmm. And it's called Grief as, it's called The Smell of uh, Dust on Rain, Grief as Praise. And the whole idea is like, when we grieve someone, we're praising them. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you are moving into this place. I, I wrote down the word ritual. Yes. Um, because I feel like what you need is like some grief ritual yeah. and celebration. Yes, yeah, um, yes. So what I, I'm going to look into it a little bit with gratitude, um, but I think like angelic is perfect for you. So I yeah. think there's a real reason why that essence is calling you. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, Desert Miracle to me, it's really about like bringing in light, like being yeah. uplifting, but it also like technically has some qualities about taking your power back when you feel like your power is being drained. Um, Which that feels like. I'm in that era right now because to be honest, like since she passed, I've been in this kind of just like, I mean, you know, I'm still functioning, but like, I've just kind of like, like zombie yeah. like status. And it's just honestly been in the past like month or so that I've been even feeling like I have enough energy or wherewithal to want to kind of dive back into like rituals and like, you know, yeah. just my own like magic and like things like that. But I, for the most part, have just, like, completely abandoned, like, not completely, but, like, I didn't have the spirit to, like, actually engage with it, you know, and so it's, like, what you said, like, writing down ritual, I was, like, yes, and then specifically that idea of, like, calling my power back, like, I feel like, especially since, like, finding out that I'm pregnant and, like, I'm, my due date is, like, getting closer, which, like, that whole experience of, like, stepping into motherhood feels like another instance of where it's, like, echoes of my mom are everywhere because yeah. it's like I'm thinking of like her as a parent and all the ways that like I want to be like her and it's almost this recognition of like I am like her and so yeah. this is like an exciting like new chapter for me and really owning that power of like a lot of a lot of like kind of just thoughts about like the strong matriarchs in my family of like you know going back to like trying to trace back more of like specifically like and it's hard because like you know there's not a lot of records it, you know be, because of colonization in Mexico but it's like trying to trace back like um where most likely were our like actual indigenous like mm -hmm. roots there pre-colonization and just this thought like that I keep having continuously is like the strong line of like matriarchal women that I am from and that I'm like I'm now a part of that and like um you know it's interesting because I'm like I have felt like because I'm non-binary I'm like oh I can't really like claim that like you know like womanhood I didn't, but it's I like, didn't know you were non-binary Christine and that yeah. actually like really helps me with this um, yeah. Is that something that you're feeling like called toward to towards your identity? With yeah, you? and especially yeah. because navigating like pregnancy has been like a lot of gender dysphoria, like at times where I'm like, I in general my whole life have felt like I it would be this very odd kind of like I don't know like yeah like I didn't have verbiage to describe it when I was younger, but a sense of dysphoria yeah. at being pregnant. And I do oscillate between that and then also being like, I can be who I am in my gender identity and still embody that really kind of like powerful feminine energy of this like line mm. of women that I've come from. And that it doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, then that has to, is it, like I don't have to fit exactly into that mold to still yeah. tap into that energy and to still have that be something that's very much like coursing through my veins and like my spirit and so it's like I'm trying to be really intentional too about like you know like our child and I think you know in general we're like you know the sex we found out that you know we're having a girl and like but you know both my partner and I are very much like <laughs> gender non-conforming <laughs> like we're like mm, no like for yeah. both of us it's like mm, mm. and so I'm like I um want to instill that in our child as well and I'm like but at the same time it's like I want to honor that kind of lineage specifically of the like femmes in yes. my bloodline you know that have like it feels like it feels significant that it's like it's 
disproportionately like women and femmes that are on my mom's yeah. side of the family and that that's who like spiritually like my guides like it's like that's 100 percent like who i'm connected to and it's like yeah. i'm having that sense through this process of being pregnant of feeling like yeah wanting to step back into that ritual and wanting to step back into that power while still holding the very real truth of like i still am like very much in grief you know yeah so it's like but it's feeling a little bit like more um balanced than it was prior where it was just like overwhelmingly all it was was grief and that was it now yeah. it's like okay i'm having this sense of like coming back to myself a little bit more while also still honoring that like I will have and forever have waves of like profound grief from like you know not having my mom and like not having my grandma and like these really influential like women in my life like being just like gone yeah. but it's like the ritual or the like kind of mental thing now for me is being like oh that inflection in my voice that I just did sounded just like my grandma mm. or like this way that I just did something yeah. is just like my mom and do you wanting know, to like honor that sorry to interrupt no no no, that was it um so you don't know where what region your matrilineal lineage is from in in so so i Mexico. so i do okay and the thing that's weird is that because i've done like a lot of research because it's um fresnio and that's actually also where my mom coincidentally my mom's dad so my grandfather his family was also from there so it's okay. like very much that's where what's the state um zacatecas okay and so it's like most of what i found are like it's a it falls into an area where it's like um mostly that area where they say like oh what is the indigenous tribe yeah. it was like um zacatecas and it was saying like you know or also like a lot of like nomadic like tribes were through that area and so it's hard to know like for sure do you know what i mean like that i don't want to be like without knowing definitely like oh yeah i'm claiming this like indigenous like mm. lineage but i definitely am like trying to and i always have i've always had the sense of like from the time that i even connected to spirit guides at all that it was very clear to me that it's like i'm connecting with this kind of like indigenous like you know part of the lineage from mexico like very much like yeah. my spiritual waking was very much tied to simultaneous like decolonization work for myself of being like you know how what are all the ways like socially but also spiritually that like that has like impacted and like caused you know, like generational trauma and like how is that held and like you know and then the experience yeah. of like my family also then like you know immigrating to the u.s and like not having a great time like being in the u.s you know and like the trauma that came along with that and like forced assimilation and like you know like yeah. me not being fluent in spanish because it was like my grandparents were like you don't speak spanish like we're in america because they literally would get like beat with like rulers like mm -hmm. in east l.a like growing up like going to school there and so it's like um trying to unpack all of that and get at what i know is kind of like the core of my connection to you know the universe the divine like whatever clearly being things that fall outside of their kind of devotion to the catholic church right yeah. which is very like typical like mexican like spiritual culture is to just be like catholic church like yeah, yeah. but i'm like but that's so rooted in colonization and a lot of the practices that they had outside of that just kind of like in the home like were clearly stuff that were like indigenous stuff that got like rescued kind of like along the way yeah. but they would never label it that right like putting like an egg like under the bed like doing like you know like cleanse like um and the different like kind of like herbal stuff or like remedies that they would like do that i just got like sprinkles up because again it was something that was like oh we don't talk about that like that the only lens through which they talked about spirituality was just like catholicism and i'm like there, there's there's more to it than that and like oh yeah the pieces that like yeah. you the practices that you still had like you know were from indigenous knowledge that you just didn't label as that because that was part of like the erasure of like that whole system of being yeah um but yeah i feel very much and i always have been like i intentionally want to like reconnect back to that and particularly now i'm like the grief is still very real for me 
but simultaneously it's like what you're saying like honoring or like finding like this kind of like pr like praise of like the people that have come before me and how that has like formed me into who I am and like how I want to intentionally pass that on to like this next like generation or you know iteration of our like family mm -hmm. and like it feels it feels like yeah very divinely timed in a weird fucked up way but like you know yeah. it feels like yeah. what I needed right now to have that like really kind of deep self-reflection and gratitude of like how far I've come and how much I am a product of like my grandmother and my mom and like you know even me yeah. having distinct like stories or things told me about like my grandma's mom and that's who my middle name Rose is after her Rosa um and so it's like you know it just feels like this kind of like rich like history and how like that is in me now how does that translate to my like day-to-day -day life and like how I'm like okay how does that translate to like when I have a child like really being intentional about like, like oral history and like the you know separation too of like spiritually of being like these are ways that we can like honor our ancestors like and celebrate them even though they're not here with us now like they always are in a way like da 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 yeah um instead of just being like they're in heaven the end <laughs> like oh, no. right. you know <laughs> you know it's almost like when you're talking what i'm there's a bunch of stuff that you know that i'm thinking of like where we, we you know i can't put more than seven essences in one blend because then it's like a party yeah. where you don't know where all the messages it's too wild and i usually try to only do five and i have i have seven written down but then there's another well, I want to stick with those seven and we'll see what we can do, you know, like we decide to only hone in on a few of them. But I see it almost like a circle. There's a circle of reconnection yeah. just in all the ways that your life has changed and, and like how much you've grown just in like the last year. Um, yeah. There's a circle of connection there between your ancestors. And what I was thinking, like, I don't know that much about Zacatecas, but I think it's in the highlands, right? Is it high desert? Do you know I that? I think it is. I would have. I don't know the topography like for sure. That I would have to check, but I think that it that sounds familiar because I haven't been there. Like I've been to Mexico yeah. like many times, but I haven't been there. And I'm like, because it's a landlocked I want state, to go. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, more than likely, yes. Because what I'm trying to think is like, what would be some of the native plants? And I know there's probably like, well, I don't even know if there's a maguey that's in like Oaxaca mm -hmm. but I I think what I'm wondering is if there's beaver tail um which is that one right by the Angelica that's the yeah. one that I'm feeling really called I think Angelica 100 mm -hmm. definitely feeling called to give you Angelica there's a reason that that you were drawn to that. I know I keep going back yeah to it. but the one next to that beaver tail yeah that it's, one it's feels because I was drawn to that one too and I thought it was just because I liked the name I was like beaver tail that's cute yeah <laughs> Well, I'm wondering if there are beaver tails in like the Zacatecas region and I'll have to like yeah. look into that. But what I feel about beaver tail is it is a deep like femme ancestral wisdom. Um, so I thought of that and Angelica is for like intuition development from our guides. Mm -hmm. So what Angelica does is it helps us re receive messages from um, our spirit guides or from our spirituality. Um, I'm on the fence about Desert Marigold. If we have to leave one out, I think I would leave that one out just so we... Because yeah. what I want is for you to get like a really strong message from a few plants instead mm -hmm. of like little messages from a from bunch. All of them, yeah. But calendula, you oh, know, yeah. which is interesting because calendula is marigold, but it's the European marigold. Mm -hmm. So not to like bring you back to like that part of your lineage or anything, but calendula is specifically a lot about being in gratitude. Yeah. Um, and it's also the sun, you know, like it has a similar vibe as Desert Marigold because it's like, it's got this sunlight. It ha it's associated in medical astrology with the sun. Mm -hmm. So when we think about that, we bring, we bring the light in. So I love calendula for you. And then I loved that you mentioned being non-binary because I had been thinking like within the minute before that, um, I was like, Lily, we need to find a Lily for you. But the only two Lilies I have are Calla Lily and Naked Lady Lily. And mm -hmm. I use Calla Lily for folks that have like some, you know, gender, no, I don't want to say gender issues because that makes it sound negative, but like yeah, there's gender concern, like they want to focus on like gender and like um, melding like masculine and feminine mm -hmm. and like their non-binary identity. So I use Calla Lily for that, but I use Naked Lady Lily for self-image 
and body image to mm -hmm. the outside world. So the fact that you, you know, are maybe experiencing some dysphoria being pregnant, I think calla lily is great for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then honeysuckle. So, I love honeysuckle. Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> and the other thing is I have a glycerite of honeysuckle that we could put the essence in. So I think we should do that. So yeah. honeysuckle is, it's not, it's a big one for inner child work. It's also a big one for manifestation work. Mm -hmm. um, but the one, the reason that I wanted to include this um, is because, oh, now I'm like, what was it that you said where I was like honeysuckle? Well, even just the inner child work, I'm like, that feels so relevant right yeah. now. Cause I'm back in the house that like I grew up in and yeah. having a lot of like reflective stuff about like what about my childhood the parts of it that were so formative for me in the ways that i loved the way my mom parented and so it's like i am inherently having like inner child stuff you know come up absolutely um and there's honeysuckle like in the neighborhood around my mom's house that i always like yeah get, like slip it <laughs> yeah it's a i love honeysuckle it's so underrated like as a medicinal herb i think you know, honeysuckle is a lot about gratitude as well and abundance. Mm -hmm. And what I want to bring in for you is sort of like this energy of like intuitive development, also like a lot of strength. Like I'm yeah. seeing this like really strong like practice. Like the mm -hmm. word practice comes up like yeah. you having this practice of gratitude, of mm -hmm. grief, of motherhood, of care towards yourself and others, you know, and, and like cultivating that for your child. Yeah. So, and then the last essence I wrote down was angel's trumpet. Which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like, like, Datura is the um, devil's trumpet. It's mm -hmm. the one that grows out here, the white flower. But Angel's trumpet, you might have it where you are. It's like the hanging The hang red. oh my god, wait, yeah. stop. Okay, so Angel's trumpet, I was like, I think it's that, but then I waited for you to say that it's hanging. Yeah. Um, My mom loved it. Like, and Perfect. I loved it. There was a lot of it that grew yeah. at the, by the beach house that we were staying at, like, when I first was, like, Oh, <laughs> bring me back to life like yeah. right after she passed yeah um so it reminds me of her yeah her that's well. perfect then because angel's trumpet is about you know it's like a trumpet so it's heralding in a new chapter yeah so new I, chapter vibes so yeah. i'm gonna cross out desert variable just to like but all the others i want to keep and if you decide later on you're like but i really wanted the desert variable just like email me yeah. and i'll send you another one but i want to focus on i like to i don't like to do as many as seven because it's mm -hmm. just it's too much um, so I think I'll use a honeysuckle glycerite, and then we'll do essences of angelica, calendula, calla lily, angel's trumpet, and beaver tail. It's still a lot. Cool. Yeah. But it sounds like everything has its place. They all yeah. kind of go together. I think this should be really powerful for you. And if you want to try the beaver tail right now, I think you should. Maybe I agree. Maybe try it, and then let me know if you want it in the essence. I already feel like yes. Okay. But I'll try it. Okay. To be sure. Awesome. Over and out. No, Thank you, Robert. <laughs> yeah, we, we, Our video 